The World Cup in Japan and South Korea, 6.30am kickoffs, the golden generation was reaching its peak. Even with the injuries to stalwarts like Steven Gerrard and Gary Neville, England rode into the tournament as one of the favourites alongside a generational Brazil, world champions France, Argentina, Spain, Italy and Germany. David Beckham was out for revenge after being sent off against Argentina in Saint-Étienne four years prior, Michael Owen was the reigning Ballon d'Or winner and England proudly paraded a treble win in Manchester United of which four of that team were picked by Sven Goran Eriksson for the tournament. England were drawn into a group of death alongside Argentina, Sweden and Nigeria. By the time England reached the knockout stages, Beckham had got his revenge and with two draws against Sweden and Nigeria, England limped over the line. Michael Owen was yet to click into gear, but Denmark were next in the round of 16. England expected. June 15th, 2002, 11.30am kickoff in England. Michael Owen clicked into gear. Rio Ferdinand scored a fortuitous goal and Emil Heskey made it three, all before half-time. Denmark were beaten. Ant and Deck were in the charts for a World Cup themed song. England were in the quarter-finals for the first time in 12 years and it was only the mighty Brazilians, led by Cafu and managed by Scolari that stood in their way of a third ever semi-final appearance. With Italy, France, Argentina already out, Host South Korea set to perform another miracle against Spain and Germany having an under par squad. This was the proxy World Cup final. Ronaldo vs Saul Campbell, Rivaldo vs Rio Ferdinand, Roberto Carlos vs David Beckham, Lucio vs Michael Owen, Ronaldinho vs Paul Scholes and Cafu vs Trevor Sinclair. They were perfectly matched. Roughly 6.53am. Michael Owen sent kids forced into school halls on a warm Friday morning to raptures. England led the best national team ever assembled in the World Cup and then Rivaldo levelled on the break. The excitement was tempered. Five minutes after half-time, Trevor Sinclair ploughed straight through the back of Cleverson, 30 yards out by the touchline, a needless foul. And then Ronaldinho callously drops the ball to the floor. The usual free-kick rigmarole transpires on the edge of the box. Everybody's expecting a cross. Like only a genius can, however, Ronaldinho simply clips the ball goalwards. David Seaman staggers backwards, he's beaten, the net ripples. Nine days later, Ronaldo strikes twice in Yokohama with his power cut haircut against the Germans to win Brazil's fifth World Cup. England have yet to follow up on their 1966 World Cup triumph. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Ronaldinho didn't lob David Seaman. 50th minute in the quarter-final, David Seaman staggered backwards. The ball sailed over his head, out of reach, the net remains still. The referee blows for a goal kick. Seven minutes later, the Brazilian number 11 clattered into Danny Mills, 25 yards out from the English goal, and sees red. Brazil, once dominant in the match, were now on the ropes, even with their illustrious talent. Michael Owen struck once more, allowed only by a deft Emil Heskey through ball. Owen hit his third goal of the tournament in the 2-0 win over Turkey, four days later. The biggest of enemies remained in the final for England, Germany and Yokohama. Owen needed two goals to tie Ronaldo, Rivaldo and Miroslav Klose for the golden boot. England were favourites going into the contest but found themselves struggling to keep Oliver Nerville and Miroslav Klose at bay in the first half. England fortunately had David Seaman in between the sticks. As the game went on and the scores remained level, the German field weakened by Michael Ballack's absence via suspension, England began to dominate the middle of the park. Nicky Butt, Paul Scholes and Owen Hargreaves in an adjusted midfield three overpowered the Germans. Michael Owen struck twice. The Ballon d'Or was paired up with a golden boot and a World Cup winner's medal. England's 36 years of hurt was over. The hangover of the World Cup victory lapsed over into qualification for Euro 2004, with slender 1-0 wins over Slovakia and Macedonia. Solid performances from Seaman left Sven with no other option but to continue with the ageing goalkeeper. England would only drop points in the final game away at Turkey with qualification already sealed. Meanwhile, Seaman was still creating success on club level with Arsenal. The 2002-03 Premier League title race ran close to the wire with just two points in the race with three games remaining. Arsenal closed out a 2-1 win at Highbury over Leeds, courtesy of five fantastic saves from Seaman. This forced Manchester United into winning on the final day at Goodison Park to regain the Premier League. The Gunners, however, put the pressure on with a 6-1 fraction of Southampton in order to take the title race to the final game of the season. While United were at Goodison, Arsenal were up in the northeast at Sunderland. Arsenal were stuck on 78 points with United 2 ahead. Both teams won 39 goal difference, meaning Arsenal needed to better United's result in order to claim a second successive league title. David Beckham and Kevin Campbell exchanged goals in the first half, by which point Arsenal sorted into a 4-0 lead over Sunderland. Manchester United couldn't find the winning goal against the stoic Everton defence, who needed something out of the game to get a UEFA Cup spot for the following season. 
Arsenal had retained their Premier League title. Seaman would sign a final year extension on his contract to see his club career out at Highbury and 12 months later he was celebrating a third successive Premier League title as part of the Invincibles. And on the international stage Sven Goran Eriksson picked the 40 year old as his number one for the upcoming Euro 2004. Game 1 Seaman gave away a last gas penalty in a late Zinedine Zidane masterclass as England slumped to a 2-1 defeat. Game 2 England saw it through with a 3-0 win over Switzerland and Game 3 Seaman flapped at two corners to give Croatia a point in the final group game. Luckily, England sailed through on goal difference. England limped into game four, a quarter final with host Portugal. Michael Owen put England into an early lead. It looked for all the world that England were to progress into the semi final until Helder Postiga rattled in an equaliser seven minutes from time. And in extra time, Portugal pinned England back into their own half. Postiga struck again before half time, a prodded finish that squirmed under Seaman's body. Postiga wrapped up his hat trick to complete the 3 1 route when Seaman parried a soft chance from Rui Costa directly into his path. With England's quarter-final exit, David Seaman retired in humiliation. Let's lob the winners and losers. David Seaman, winner. Because his international career ended with the same fatal mistake, but a World Cup winner's medal trumped all of that. Brazil, losers. Because one of the best ever Brazilian sides would be consigned to a what-if category, much like the 1982 side, which is often named as the best side never to win a World Cup. Manchester United, also losers because Seaman thwarted United's 2003 Premier League title win and the Red Devils would go without the title for three years in a row after winning it for three years in a row themselves. And finally England, winners, because they won their second World Cup, finally. Is this the alternative universe you expected? Please let us know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for a future scenario. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash a like on the video and subscribe to What If Football for more alternate football universes.